everybody has your business in this mental Rolodex in their head. Mm -hmm. And your card in that Rolodex is not the name of your business. It's the problem that you solve. Welcome back to another episode of Good Business. Guys, I've got a dear friend here, Kurt Stockwell. Uh, this is going to be a fun conversation because we're going to talk about some actual uh, principles that you can employ in making an immediate impact into your marketing strategy. And uh, it's, it's going to be about what we love to talk about, which is StoryBrand. Uh, Kurt and I, we met through the StoryBrand community. Um, he runs a thriving agency um, out in Spokane, Washington, uh, called Well Dressed Walrus. I'll let him explain that name. <laughs> um, and uh, he's he's a brilliant marketer and um, an honorable man. And I'm excited to have him on the show. So, Kurt, thank you so much for making the flight all the way from the Pacific Northwest to the balmy Austin, Texas. Yeah. Today. Hey, it's uh, it was 70 degrees yesterday here. Mm -hmm. Now it's what, 40 degrees? Something like that. Yeah. But I'll take it because it's warmer than where I'm from. <laughs> I think we're getting more snow and we had sub-zero temperatures the other day, Ooh. but uh, I love the seasons and yeah. I live out in the in the woods and the trees are all frosted, so it's beautiful. Oh gosh. A little jealous. A little <laughs> jealous. Uh, I think the trees are about maybe a max of 10 feet tall here, in, yeah. <laughs> at least this part of Texas. Um, well, Kurt, would you do me a favor and just kind of give uh, a little bit of background of sure. who you are, uh, maybe explain the name of the brand. Why the, would you name brand. your company <laughs> and, that? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're a marketer, so yeah. yeah, there you go. But yeah, I'd love it if you could just give the audience a little bit of a background on you. Yeah, sure. So um, I started my business um, in 2010, 2011. And uh, I started it because I wanted to run my own company and I wanted to work wherever I had my laptop. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'll just build websites. That's easy. Uh, and then I kind of got caught, caught the marketing bug and really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, so I ran my business for a number of years and we always said we didn't do copywriting. I always said, I'm not a copywriter. And I had a, a friend of mine that gave me the book, Building a Story Brand the month it came out, I think it was in 2017. And I read this book and I went, that's a formula that I could follow. And it makes so much sense. Yeah. Why didn't I think of this? Uh, so the story brand formula is not only what I used in my business to clarify my messaging, but it's something that uh, just really resonated with me and allows me to walk people through a framework that I could now say, I am a copywriter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that hard. It just really comes down to creating messaging that makes sense to your customers. And it's all about meeting them where they are at with the big question that they have of, do you have a solution for my problem? <laughs> That's it. Uh, so I became a StoryBrand certified guide uh, a few months later in uh, 2018. We met a couple times at different uh, events um, and uh, not only have I learned from you from the wise businessman you are, but we became close friends too. Yeah. And now we get to mm -hmm. learn from each other about being dads and business owners and husbands and all that good stuff. So it's been uh, a fun journey with StoryBrand and I got to meet people like you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> I feel the same way. Well, um, with that in mind, uh, the reason why I wanted you to come on, obviously you're a brilliant marketer and we're going to talk about that today. Um, is you specifically um, help guide business leaders um, just at the entry point of marketing mm -hmm. to understanding a one-liner mm -hmm. and how to create their own and mm -hmm. how to use their own. Um, can you start out by just first off telling me what is a one-liner? What is a one-liner? Yeah, what, yeah, what's a one-liner and um, could you explain that to the audience? Yeah, today? so a yeah. one-liner is simply just a very basic answer to the question not basic, a very powerful answer to the question, what do you do? Mm -hmm. When people are experiencing your marketing, they want two questions answered. What do you do? How do I get it? And the faster you can do that with your messaging, the faster you're going to get people into a buying conversation and the more conversions you're going to have, the more opportunities you're going to have. That very first question of what do you do 
often is missed by a lot of businesses. It's not necessarily always asked verbally, what do you do? It can be, a lot of times it is. But every time somebody's coming to your website, they're experiencing your marketing on social media, they're seeing you know, an ad somewhere, immediately they want to know what do you do. A one-liner is simply a two to three sentence answer to that question. And the reason why it's short and the reason why it's important that it's short, it needs to be a hook. It needs to draw them in to a deeper conversation about the problem that you're trying to solve. That's what a one-liner is. The term one-liner comes from Hollywood. A lot of people are like, so it's one sentence? No, that's kind of more of a tagline. A one-liner comes from Hollywood when a somebody's pitching a movie, and you know this, you've pitched movies before. The one-liner is really what a studio will use to get the investors in the room interested into learning more about the movie, about mm-hmm. the story, about what they're trying to to sell. So it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a pitch and it's a hook. Yep. The famous one liner that uh, from Hollywood years ago was when the, the folks that came up with the, the story alien aliens, they presented it to the room and said, it's jaws in space. That was the big famous one liner from, <laughs> from Hollywood. Well, jaws in space. Okay. So you've seen the movie jaws digging in a little bit more into this and why that's such an amazing answer to that question is Jaws is all about jump scares and suspense and you're isolated out in the water. And immediately I could imagine the room, that room of executives going, they're flooding immediately into all of these, uh, all this understanding of what Jaws is, what a success that was. Let's just do that in space. And they're thinking, cha-ching, that's going to be huge. And so the importance of delivering it in that way rather than just diving into a gigantic narrative about that movie was it allowed the audience to kind of come to their own conclusion. And when you can have somebody come to a conclusion that you're guiding them to without trying to fill the space with a bunch of words, a bunch of narrative, you're much more uh, able to make a really deep, a deep connection quickly. Absolutely. You know, <clears throat> Backstage, before we got going, we were talking a little bit about the value of in-person, um, of of being in front of a potential lead. I think uh, yeah. a good friend of ours, Tyler, was just said, hey, go yeah. to Salt Lake City and yeah. go get leads. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do there? Uh, well, specifically con- from a contextual perspective, that was go to this event and yeah. go get leads. Um, I think for most business owners, they're, it's scary. Mm-hmm. It's really scary. Uh, whether whether you, I mean, you could even be running a marketing agency, um, and it'd be scary to go into a group setting and, what do I do? Uh, and then typically, when people are awkward or uncomfortable, they fill the, they fill the air uh, with words, and typically mm-hmm. those words are really confusing to everyone listening. Um, I'll never forget. <clears throat> When I was first getting going in the mid 2000s, I would uh, go to a chamber of commerce event, and uh, I'll never forget it. It was at Dosi Do Cafe. We've, and, we've all paid our stripes. Oh yeah, and <laughs> and uh, it was probably 150 people in the room, and and all of the new people got to get up and give a. 30 Let me just say how speech. Texas oh, yeah, it is Do-Si-Do that Cafe. you went to the Dosi Do <laughs> Cafe. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> uh, that was the Northwest Houston Chamber of Commerce. Gotta love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, and uh, so here I am sitting at all these. I mean, it it, it is everything you're envisioning it um, for the name Dosi Do. And uh, so all these business owners, these good old boys, oil guys, all this kind of stuff. And um, it's my turn to get up. And I mean, my background is in film and television, as you mentioned. So yeah, I know what a log line is, aka a one liner. Um, but I didn't really think about how that might correlate in business. Um, and at the time, I was doing video work. I was doing websites. I was doing a lot of this. Um, <laughs> but that's not what I said. What I said was, in my head, I was like, you know what? Last time I got up and said something about websites, no one, no one came and talked to me. So I'm going to say something different. Maybe I'll get their attention that way. <clears throat> so I stand up. And in my head, I'm standing on the chair. I'm pretty sure I'm not standing on the chair, but that's how terrifying it was. You're and so tall. People probably yeah, thought I might you were as on well a chair. Have been standing yeah. on the chair. And uh, I say, <clears throat> yeah, I've got a really cool drone and <laughs> I fly drones. And um, if, if uh, you have a real estate project, you need some drone work, fl- uh, I, I can fly drones for you. And I'm licensed. 
back then licensed meant you took like a free online course. <laughs> um, and uh, I was licensed by whoever the course was. Anyway, um, you'd be surprised. I actually had one person come up and, uh, and talk to me afterwards. Okay. And you know what they said? Hey, what kind of drone do you have? I have a drone too. <laughs> I didn't get any business out of that chamber of it. Shocker. Uh, and and the reality is like that's that's how most people go into yeah. that. Granted, I don't do that now. Uh, I've learned to, to be a little bit more prepared. Um, but when when you show up to those events, whether it's a conference, mm-hmm. a trade show, or it's a simple chamber event, or if you're, you know, meeting somebody for the first time in there, it's it's your spouse's friend or something. Um, I mean, you've still got to be able to explain what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this day and age, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot here, but digital ads don't always work. Mm-mm. They don't. And for some businesses, they're kind of pointless. Um, in-person relationship building is key. And no one's going to remember 10 paragraphs you preach at them. Um, what they're going to remember is the one sentence you sh- shared. Mm-hmm. So... I couldn't agree more with with the approach. Um, and Let me just say something. That's such an important um, fact because the reality is everybody has your business in this mental Rolodex in their head. Mm-hmm. And your card in that Rolodex is not the name of your business. It's the problem that you solve. Yep. That's what's going to stick. And of all of those folks at the chamber, if you can implant very clearly a problem that anybody can understand, your little mental, your little uh, mind card, Rolodex card is going to sit in everybody's mental Rolodex because they're going to go, I understand what that problem is. I have that problem. Or I understand what that problem is. I know someone who has that problem. And I want to connect this person with that person because I can say, hey, um, I remember you talking about that tax problem that you were ha- you were having related to this very specific aspect of of business. I just met somebody that can do that. Mm. Um, well, what it, you know, I don't r- totally know, and who cares? You're making the connection because you know that they have a solution for the problem. Often, what I say to people is, if you can unpack your one liner in a way that makes people understand, I understand that that problem. I either have that problem or I know someone has that problem. You're going to get into the into the, the next phase of the conversation, which is, that's so interesting, tell me more. Mm. That's all you're looking for. When I guide businesses through uh, this, this exercise or individuals through this exercise, I have a podcast called The One-Liner Workshop. Go check it out. Like and subscribe. But um, I, and also like and subscribe to this podcast too. Um, <laughs> I don't want to take your your no your, no no your, go your, check your it subs. out. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, often when I'm what I when I'm working through this, uh, individuals they 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 want to put too many words mm-hmm. into this exercise. They want to say comma and comma and comma and, yeah. and I always say commas are your are not your friend. Um, you want to be clear. You want to be brief. And all you want to do is unpack, and this is kind of the formula I take people through. Uh, What is the problem that you solve that anybody can understand? Mm -hmm. What is your your unique way of solving that problem? And what is the tangible result that someone can experience when that problem is solved? That's Mm -hmm. it. Walk away. Not walk away. But stand there and let people go, oh, that's so interesting. Tell me more. Um, And so that's really, that's it. That's all the. That's all that you have to do. It was. Um, I've. I've presented this before, many audiences before, and it's a great. It's a really good uh, a little mini uh, course to bring somebody through in like a lunch and learn, yep. um, or in a breakout at a at a trade show, which I've done before. It's a great breakout, and I was in a room of realtors. Everybody in the room was a realtor. Wow. So. I'm standing there going, now we're probably going to, you're probably wondering, how am I going to get everybody in this room to have a different answer to the question, what do you do when you all sell the same thing? And I, and my response to them was, you all sell the same thing, but people buy from you because of different reasons. Mm. They buy from you or they work with you because of you. So we really keyed into that next point of how do you uniquely solve this problem? And that's a big part of it as well. 
Hmm. And um, yeah, I love the how do you uniquely solve this problem because most businesses forget to talk about that. Yeah. It's a transaction. But what this one liner does is it allows you to pivot towards that relational engagement, that relational yes. buyer instead of the transactional buyer. Because most people, especially with a big investment like a real estate uh, transaction, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're not going to be Oh, you're a realtor? Okay, I need a realtor. I'm doing a transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be my realtor. No, no, that's not how that works. No, they want a, they want a relationship, a connection. Yeah, th there has to be a level of trust built. And that trust is only earned by proving that you are uniquely qualified to yeah. help them overcome their problems. Not to do it for them, but to help them. And you do that through a variety of ways. I mean, as we all know in the story brand uh, framework, that authority could be um, a review, a testimonial from someone. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't put that in the one-liner, um, but a review, a testimonial, um, a, a proven process, uh, anything that, that you can say, hey, look, I've done this before, and here's why. Here's my certification. Here's my credentials. Um, and that's a really good, um, uh, actually important thing to, to, to bring somebody through in this exercise is, you know, like, I don't know how I uniquely solve it. Well, what do your customers say in your testimonials? Mm. Let's start looking through those. Let's, let's pull them up and read them. Yeah. You know, if you've got some Google reviews. Okay, the common thread that I'm seeing here is this. Mm. This is why people work with you. Let's talk about that. Brilliant. Yeah, but I also do this, but I also do this, but I also do this. Okay, that's okay. You can get there yeah. when they ask the question, that's so interesting, tell me more. Um, or if they're on your website or if they're experiencing some other aspect of your messaging, they're clicking that next link or they're scrolling down a little bit where you can start to unpack that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. People are distracted. People are busy. We have so many marketing messages just pounding our eyeballs and our ears every day that you will elevate yourself above all of that if you're brief, if you're clear, if you're punchy, and if your message really does hook somebody into wanting to spend their mental bandwidth to actually learn more. People don't want to be sold to. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be sold to, even when they're looking to be to buy something. They want to know that you have a solution to the problem that they that, that they have. And this is a fantastic way again to like hook somebody into that next conversation. It's not salesy, it's not slimy. Um, it's very natural. And the when I take a business through this, it's funny because um, immediately everybody kind of tries to be a little bit car salesy, mm -hmm. right? Car salesman. And so we just kind of have a real uh, easy conversation around making that more human, making that roll off your tongue a little bit more. Um, and by the end of our my session with businesses or even the folks that are on my podcast, when I walk through that with them, it's like, yeah, this is comfortable. I think I could, I think I could wear this mm. and it could be comfortable. Um, and it, it's, you know, when you come up with a really good one liner, you, I always tell people, you got to say it a lot. You got to say it over and over. You might nuance it a little bit till it rolls off the tongue. Um, or you might want to tweak it a little bit. I often say, this isn't the 10 commandments of your messaging. This is the constitution. We had kind of determined these are, these are the, 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 the kind of the rules we want to live by, but we can kind of massage it a little bit. And, you know, I've talked to people before that we worked on a one liner and a few months later, how's it going? How did, you know, what do you say? Actually, I don't say it this way anymore. I say it this way. Perfect. That's where you're, how you're comfortable saying it. Say it that way. Brilliant. Yeah, because it really has to fit. It really has to mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yeah, and uh, across employees within the organization even. Yeah. Um, so uh, with, with what you said earlier about how you kind of break it down into these three mm -hmm. categories, could you kind of concisely sure. share, hey, what, what, is, what is the formula for a good one-liner? Yeah. And then what's maybe a, a good example of that one-liner that maybe you've seen really help impact a company? Yeah. Again, step one is identify the problem that your customer has. And you want to identify the problem in a really kind of a high level, 10,000 foot flyover level of the problem. Um, because you want to make sure that the listener, anybody, any listener can go, I understand what that problem is. Mm. Um, you were talking about dr flying a drone, yeah. you know? And so um, what you would say with a one-liner is you would never talk about the drone. Mm -hmm. You would talk about how, uh, it was probably for like real estate companies yeah. and stuff, right? Um, many real estate companies have a hard time 
getting eyeballs or, or making a big impact mm -hmm. with their with their photos. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the problem is the the real estate company has a hard time making a big impact standing out mm -hmm. with their real estate photos. You know, I have a unique way of delivering uh, this these unique photos or videos so that their customers pay attention or their potential customers pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. Yep. And that's what you could have said. Yep. And then if people are like, wow, how do you do that? Well, if you, do you know what a drone is? You know, if this was <laughs> 10 years ago, people are probably like, you know, I don't know what that is. So yeah, when that's I, exactly what it was. And so <laughs> when, I, when I take yeah. somebody through that first element of finding a solution, finding a, uh, identifying a problem that anyone can understand, we really break it down into that, that very uh, general problem. And a lot of times we're not even talking about their product. Yeah. Because your product is not what ultimately what people buy. You know, you've heard the whole thing. Um, people don't buy a drill bit. Uh, they they want to buy a solution to make a you know a hole in the wall yeah. kind of a thing. Um, and so the working working through that, and then the next step is how do you uniquely solve that problem? Mm -hmm. So we really kind of break down. We talked a little bit about it before. Like let's look at our testimonials. How do you uniquely do this in this room full of uh, real estate uh, um, you know people in real estate realtors? Everybody had a very unique way of doing it. So that's this next step is how do you uniquely solve that problem? And then what's the tangible result that somebody can experience when that problem is solved? And so they might feel a certain way or they might make more, get more revenue or they might um, you know, uh, uh, get more connections. And sometimes it's feeling, sometimes it's actually uh, something actually physical that, that, they're, they're, that they're getting. But again, the thing that they're getting also needs to be understood and easy to, to kind of uh, take in and remember. Often what I say is a good one-liner is memorable and repeatable. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can walk away from a conversation and somebody can remember and repeat something you said in there, then that's a win. Mm. So with that being said, what are some common challenges for implementing that? What are the mistakes you see all the yeah. time? I mean, you mentioned a couple already about yeah. car salesmen, yeah type language, but, but what are some issues that you see? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> when I do this with a large group, what I'll do is I'll present for about 15 minutes, um, 20 minutes, and then I'll say, okay, let's workshop for a little bit. Um, we're just going to spend, you know, about six to 10 minutes quiet and let you just kind of come up with your one liner. And I have a, a little sheet that I pass out and everybody's, it's broken down. What's the problem that I solve? How do I uniquely solve it? And, um, and then what's the tangible result? Inevitably, people want to fill it with comma and, comma and, comma mm -hmm. and. And also they want to kind of turn it into like a commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, are you tired of not having the, uh, the photos that you want for your, uh, you know, real estate company? No, that's not, that's not how we're doing it here. It's, it's much more personal and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and easier than that. And so what I'll work, what I'll do is I'll work through uh, th those. And so I'll, I'll ask the room, who would like to share? Okay. And then inevitably, you know, somebody is, is brave enough to share. And it always comes back with very kind of commercial pitchy, yep. you know, salesy. I'm like, this isn't salesy. This is just opening a conversation. That's all we're doing. We're, we're, we're creating an open door for a conversation. Yeah. So, and I'll just kind of, sometimes they'll, they'll get the problem really, they'll nail the problem. Sometimes they'll really nail the, the uh, unique way they solve the problem. Sometimes they'll really nail the, uh, the, the tangible result. And I'll highlight that. It'll be like, your tangible result is perfect. Let's fix the other parts of it. Yeah. Um, and so everybody wants to make it long and everybody yep. wants to, to the, the concept I think that people have is I have to stuff everything about my business into this little window of time that someone has given me because uh, if I don't, then they're not going to understand. Yep. And the reality is the opposite happens. People start to tune out people, you're at an event or whatever, and there's some fantastic food over at the buffet. <laughs> and they're thinking, I want to get back to the buffet because yeah. this person is confusing me. And most people will look at you and go, uh-huh, mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. And in their mind, they're thinking, I have no idea what you're talking How about. How do I get out of this conversation? How do I get out of this yeah. conversation? 100%. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And most people are polite enough not to tell you you're confusing. Uh, but the reality is, most people are confusing. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so true. And you know, one thing that I have consistently encouraged 
while while guiding a business through developing their own one-liner, I've encouraged them not to look for that aha moment or that wow factor, mm-hmm. um, because they care so much about their business. They ca- that's why they're in business because they care about whatever it is that they're serving um, or creating, and they're not going to have that wow factor. Mm-hmm. Oh, it speaks to my heart because it is completely irrelevant to you, meaning you as the business owner shouldn't have any sort of emotional attachment to this. You're trying to be as clear and simple as possible um, so that you can then have an additional conversation afterwards. But if you are if you feel, oh man, it just speaks to me, um, then it's probably not good. <laughs> it's probably still confusing. Uh, the goal is you want it to speak to your customer and you want them to be like, oh, that's clear. That's super simple. So test it on people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, go go out to people at the grocery store. Ask the cashier at the local restaurant. Uh, ask them for feedback. Yeah. And uh, I've found that that t- tends to to work really well to massage it into and uh, go to so, the Dosi Do Cafe. Go to Dosi Do. And uh, <laughs> for the chamber group, and and stand up and and deliver it when you get your little uh, one minute to talk about your brand. A lot of times when um, I do a, a big group um, or even folks on my podcast, where are you going to use this first? Well, I go to a chamber event. <laughs> and when I stand up to talk about what I do in my one minute, I never know what to say. Now I know what to say. Yeah. You know, and that's a great place to, to uh, test it out. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then let's just talk about what we mentioned at the very beginning, trade shows, conferences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got hundreds, possibly thousands of people walking past you. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've got a booth. You've got a split second to get their attention. Um, You've got to make sure that it's relevant to them. And if they walk by and they're like, yeah, no, no, no. Well, then whatever problem you identify for them is not their problem. And that's okay. You don't want everybody coming to talk to you. But I found uh, sitting in a trade show booth numerous times, um, and, and the best way to get their attention is just by shouting out their problem. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, they're, they're going to pay attention. And then you've got a chance to talk about how you yeah, solved it. One of so. the, one of my clients, uh, they're scientists and they help businesses or help get drugs to market. Okay. And so, um, you have a drug, uh, and it has to go through all of these tests, all this testing, all these procedures and all this stuff. So they help you get through all of that stuff and get it to market. Uh, so when they came to us, for the, a lot of people come to us, they're like, can you build me a website? Um, and of course, yes, we can. But, uh, you know, what are you going to use it for? Let's talk about the full journey of what the, where this website lives in, in your marketing strategy. And, and let's kind of talk about what happens before the website. And so with this uh, group, they're a bunch of scientists. They're, you know, they're the typical scientists. They want to be in front of their beakers and <laughs> and, uh, you know, magnifying glasses. They don't want to be at a trade show. Yep. Um, and so I said, would it help if we fixed your messaging? And they said, well, yeah. And I talked about the one-liner. In fact, we have a trade show coming up, and all of us are freaked out of our minds because <laughs> we have to actually talk to people. We're not people people, you know, but we got to go pitch our brand. And I'm like, I can help you with that. And so we walked them through the one-liner, and it was funny. I, uh, I gave them some training on it. And then they're like, can we call you the day of our trade show so you can kind of prep us again to walk into the trade show with confidence about answering the question, what do we do? And I also encourage them, put your one-liner on a big banner yep. and put it in your booth. That big banner in their booth said their one-liner, and they, I got some feedback from them. They're like, it was the best trade show we've ever been to because we felt confident in what we said. We weren't stumbling over our words. Yep. When people looked at the one-liner, it already set us up to have a deeper conversation right away. And yeah. so it's a great it's a great fit, not just for the answer to the question, what do you do, but really use it everywhere in your marketing. I love it. I love it. All right, so <clears throat> talking about how this plays into a, a larger strategy mm-hmm. in the marketing front. Um, we mentioned that this is kind of a good entry point. Hey, if you wanna if you wanna handle your marketing well. A good starting point is to get your one-liner nailed down. What would you say is kind of the next step after they have a one-liner? Well, typically I'm working with businesses uh, or organizations who were talking about a full you know, marketing strategy. 
And I'm kind of coming to them and introducing, like, here's the where you need to, the first step mm-hmm. uh, is is let's get uh, for, through story brand. We do the seven parts of the story brand framework. And then what I have is I, what I call a playbook. So you got the seven parts of the story brand framework, which is the, uh, the character who has a problem, meets a guide, who you give them a, uh, a, a s- steps to take, clear call to action, help them find success and avoid failure, and then the, um, the character transformation. So walk through that, and then I'm like, okay, so what do you do with that? Okay, you can, we, we start with a brand summary or a sales letter. Well, we'll, t- we'll take those seven parts of that framework and put it into about 500 words. And then I often say, so, but you don't always have the ability to present 500 words, so then mm-hmm. what? Let's break it down into an elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is a little bit more involved than the one liner that we've been talking about. So we'll break it down into an elevator pitch and I'll color code them all and say, okay, here's the, so the, the, the characters in red, the solutions in orange. And so you see how, when we look at this 500 word sales letter, you can see all of the elements here where we're starting with the character who has a problem. And so they see where all the, the colors live in there and like, okay, I see how it's very scientific, which it is. It's very scientific. And even though the one liner is very scientific, it connects with humans the way that they want to process information. Uh, and then we eventually get to the one liner and mm-hmm. then a, a tagline. And then I'm like, okay, so now you've got all of these words that talk about your brand and we've broken them down into the most simplistic level. Now let's start infusing your marketing with them. Mm-hmm. One of the uh, one of the clients that uh, kind of a focus I have is clients who run EOS. Mm-hmm. Uh, the entrepreneur operating system. One of the things in EOS that that you're required to do for your VTO is a marketing strategy and understanding your three uniques. And so one of the things that we also do with our the story brand framework is work with these EOS companies and not only uh, establish, help them establish their three uniques, but thread that into their marketing strategy as well, which is very important. Your three uniques are, are the things that your customer identifies is obviously what makes you unique. And that's what they're looking for as well. Mm-hmm. How do you uniquely solve this problem? Um, and then of course the marketing strategy all uh, comes back to staying true to that constitution that we talked about to make sure your marketing is clear everywhere. You never want anybody in your customer journey to go from point A to point B to point C. And then in point D, they kind of fall off a cliff Mm -hmm. because all of a sudden the messaging changed or or the the sales team hands it off to the marketing or the marketing team hands it off to the sales team and it's not jiving. And so uh, with, with organizations and businesses, what I will do too is just make sure everybody's jiving Everybody is saying the same thing. A one-liner is a great thing to tell your, to, to teach your team, and it brings everybody into a common narrative about your brand. And so on a bigger picture to answer your question, that's what we do. We always stay true to that constitution, which is those seven parts of that framework. Mm-hmm. I love that. All right, so <clears throat> let's just say I'm sure that there's business leaders uh, tuning in, nonprofit leaders, uh, churches possibly even, mm. they're, they're tuning in today and they're thinking, man, I just feel like, I feel like we've, we've just been struggling for so long. I mean, I had one company that they've been in business for over 70 years and they came to me and they said, in the past 70 years, we've never been able to get clear messaging in our business. And uh, so, I mean, th- it happens all the time. And guys listening, if you're struggling, that's okay. There's a lot of people just like you in the mm-hmm. same boat. So, um, what would you what would you encourage them? With? Yeah, How you know you we've we've them? heard the um, example before. Like you're you're in your own jar trying to read the label on the outside, right? Mm. And it's really hard to do that. It's hard for us to do that, even with our own business yeah. within our own business. Yeah, you know. Um, and one of the questions that I'll ask businesses when they're approaching me for some help with messaging and marketing is, is it important to get everybody on the same page? Mm. Uh, inevitably the answer is always yes. Okay, well, let's get together with the most important people that you want to get on the same page and let's do this together. Mm. So getting together with those important people is, is, is ideal when we're coming up with this, with, especially with the marketing strategy of that playbook, the seven parts of the, of the framework, getting everybody on the same page. We can do that in a day. Yep. And then from there, we're setting some goals for marketing strategy. Um, that's really that's really critical. Um, to answer your question about uh, the 
the businesses and organizations and what should they do next. Um, I would say that uh, to work with us, if you wanted to come visit welldressedwalrus.com, which I never explained why I called my company oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I need to maybe teaser, stay till the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Or visit onelinerworkshop.com and you can see more about how I bring a business through the one-liner and then the services that we provide to help companies find uh, we, we've both had this happen where a company's like, I've never been able to, s- we've never been able to say this in a clear way. Mm. And I finally, f- I feel like we finally have a clear way to say it. And so the importance of the whole reading the the label from the inside of the bottle, you got to get outside perspective. Yep. That's really my point. Bring, bring myself in, guy like yourself, bring us in to give you an outside perspective. Because I always say, I'm really good at an- ask- asking all the stupid questions that your customers are asking. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you've been too close to I me. Mean, we're all like this close to our businesses all day long, every day. It's really hard to see the areas where your where your messaging is confusing mm. and confusion kills, especially when we're in a, 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 a market where people are very distracted already. Yep. And not getting clarity in your messaging is a really good way to waste a lot of money on marketing that doesn't work. All right. Sounds like a great call to action. I love it. <laughs> OK, so. Well-dressed walrus. Well-dressed walrus. Okay. Tell me the background. We're getting towards the end. Um, when we started, I, I had a business partner for a while, and uh, we started the company. Um, we were kind of thinking we were going to kind of go more into like the SaaS yeah. space, and uh, there were a, a, a few businesses uh, out there who had just kind of wacky names. Yeah. We had gone through every name we could think of to try to get a dot com, and we we couldn't come up with something. So literally, I just said, let's just have a list of animals and a list of adjectives and we just got to walrus and well-dressed and i was like well-dressed walrus you're never going to forget it it's going to make people uh, talking about networking it's gonna make people walk across the room this happens all the time i need to know what you do (laughs) you know so i'm having a conversation um when it comes to marketing and and uh and uh, uh websites and stuff i've met people um recently that i first met 10 years ago and they're like walrus websites I'm like, <laughs> yep so you will never not know how to connect yeah. with me because you will never forget well-dressed walrus <laughs> that's fantastic that's it way to go i love it i love it if there was an audience i'm sure everyone would be, would be clapping right now um well thank you so much for uh for being on today um i'm getting the note from my producer that we gotta wrap things up but uh, wrap it Man, this was fantastic. And guys, I hope you guys were all encouraged and uh, feel a little bit more confident with your marketing. Absolutely encourage you to go check out the one-liner workshop that Kurt does. And uh, you'll connect with him on LinkedIn too. Fully expect that. Um, And uh, in the meantime, please uh, go check out his uh, podcast, right? Yep. One-liner workshop. One-liner workshop. Awesome. And... uh, Thank you so much for tuning in with us today, guys. Uh, Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time on Good Business.